I'm here with Tom Tolles, the Washington Post Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist. Tom has been skewering Washington politicians for decades, and we're here to talk about his latest victims. Tom, tell me about the new administration. How does it change versus the Bush administration in terms of uh, your inspiration, or does it not change at all? Well, what I do is on a day-to-day -day basis, so I'm looking at the news every day. Now, obviously, when the administration changes, especially this kind of historic change, it, it changes the entire landscape. Uh, before we were dealing with a familiar set of figures, very well-known personalities, very defined issues, and a history to work off of. Now everything is new. Uh, a new president tends to get a ben benefit of the doubt. He comes in with a mandate. He's got a lot of new stuff. So instead of uh, draw cartooning about specific problems with long histories, now it's like introducing a new set of characters in a new play, a new drama, and just seeing how everything fits together and is playing out in the public. All right. Well, show us one of your recent ones from. Uh, okay. Well, recently I've been the last couple of weeks I've been in the uh, populist pitchfork uh, carrying mode. Um, there's a lot of debate, and a lot of high feelings about the uh, the bailouts, the bonuses, um, uh, Wall Street in general, and uh, there's been this cartoon is about uh, public anger. Uh, it's a, a dinner setting with a master of the universe um, uh, being served the head of, uh, of a rather upset member of the public and he's asking why is he so angry. Um, I think uh, this cartoon, for me anyway, expresses that there's a legitimate um, and highly understandable anger and uh, while a lot of people question and part of the commentary has been well is this really productive to to is and you know are these the very specific individuals this cartoon was designed to say yes in the aggregate there is something very uh, real to be upset about tell me what's happening down in the lower left hand corner here on, on a lot of your cartoons and there's okay. a little something else going on well um, it's just this is a drawing of me I uh, I look. I'm actually larger than this this drawing. I, it's a <laughs> it's a way to personalize and add an additional thought to the cartoon. Sometimes it amplifies. Sometimes it extends. Sometimes it even cuts the other way. This one uh, it says uh, he referring to the head here wants to put you off your feed, um, implying that he's uh, his goal is to uh, dampen the the master's appetite for more of the same. As you show us, uh, uh, show us another one, and, and as you do, tell me about your your inspiration. I mean, is it the front pages? Is it committee hearings? Is it? It's I like everybody else in Washington. I try to read everything, watch everything, know everything. Obviously, that's impossible. Um, but I think my job is somewhat to be a distiller. There's mm -hmm. just so much stuff out there. There's so much commentary. There's so much factual matter that somebody needs to be, I tend to think of myself as being the one-stop shopping, um, the, the last word on an issue. After you've read everything else, then you see, well, what does this all boil down to? Um, now this one was, we've heard so much about too big to fail, too big to fail, and we're thinking, well, are they too big to fail? How much do we need to give them? How much do we need to uh, accommodate their needs and desires? This one, uh, I turned it around to be more, I thought was the more significant side of that, uh, small enough to fail, and it's just an ordinary person who's lost his house, lost his 401k, lost his job, and he's sitting out. He's sitting out in the rain. Now this one, uh, I got a phone call from a guy in Baltimore and he's, he, w he went on and on and it's just exactly what a cartoonist wants to hear. He said, you know, there's so much analysis, there's so much technical uh, explanation for things. Somebody needs to get to the way the, the thing actually feels for real people. And that's what this one was about. And he said in particular, uh, aside from the rain falling on the poor guy, he loved the uh, the forlorn birds, birds on mm. the wire. It's, on the it's a little touch like that that can sometimes convey the atmosphere of, a, of an idea. Since you do distill everything and you're, you're uh, poking at a lot of powerful people, has it ever gotten you in trouble? Pat Oliphant had a, an issue this week with the Anti-Defamation League, was very outraged about one of his cartoons. Has that ever happened to you and, and how do you walk that line? Uh, a cartoonist has to push the edge a little bit. If you pull back all the time, there's no edge, there's no, there's no fire, there's no passion. Uh, for me, 
the I have had some firestorms. For me, it's always been exactly for the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I did a cartoon when the week that uh, Princess Diana and Mother Teresa died in the same week, Princess Diana got all the coverage. I did a cartoon con contrasting the the beautiful princess dying, getting all the coverage, and just an elderly woman. And gee, why was it that? Uh, why do you suppose there was this uh, divergence in coverage? And for some reason, uh, a phone tree or an email tree got started that somehow turned the cartoon upside down and said that the, car the point of the cartoon was that, that Mother Teresa did not deserve any attention because she was elderly and unattractive. <laughs> well, I got just hammered over that one. I, on another cartoon, I got uh, a letter from all six chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff because I did a cartoon sympathetic to the, the stresses the Army was under beca uh, because of my portrayal of the Army as a wounded soldier. Well, again, this it, it completely flipped the intention of the cartoon. I just was inundated with anger and uh, annoyance and it was, again, it was it was misinterpreting, it was flipping the whole point of the cartoon. Mm -hmm. Now that isn't always the case. Uh, sometimes cartoons are attacked and rightly for the overt intentionality that they're portraying. For me, it's been just the opposite. Well, we'll look forward to seeing your next one in the Washington Post. Tom Tolls, thank you very much for being with us. And thanks all of you for watching Washington Unplugged. We'll look forward to being with you next week here on cbsnews.com.